I'm Dawn Watson, and I'm here with Michelle Murphy. We are the co-hosts of Murphy, Watson & Company. And today, we are delighted to have as guests John Jonas Gruen and Sam Swayze. They are collaborators on this hot new book called Two Men. So uh, welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> We're so happy to have you. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And did you Great come in from New York City? Came in from New York City uh, yesterday with John, stayed over at his place um, in Watermill, which is beautiful to be there. A lot of history there. For many of his early photographs came from with Leonard Bernstein and Robert Rauschenberg, and so it feels like a lot of history is there. It's nice to be there. Which are in the book, by the way. Yes. Does it, you have wonderful <laughs> photographs of them in the book. Can you talk a little, Sam, I know that you are the impetus for this book having happened. Can you talk mm -hmm. a little bit about how you came across this idea? Uh, well, to begin with, uh, I mean, obviously there's a lot of changes going on with uh, same-sex marriage has been accepted or legalized in Maine, Massachusetts, uh, New York, um, Connecticut, et cetera. And um, I also noticed that John had all these images of two men. Um, and it wasn't explicitly the idea that this would be necessarily a book about homosexuality, but uh, rather... Um, the affection between two men, of love between two individuals. Um, because I think when same-sex marriage was legalized. Um, Someone it, loves John quite a lot right exactly, now. Exactly. That's, that's what it seems like. Yeah. <laughs> sorry about that. We're but, not the only one. Sorry about that. <laughs> I just thought it wasn't me. Call. So continue. But, so same-sex yeah, marriage so was legalized. I think that, yeah, when it was legalized, it, it, was, it was more of a, it was an embrace, a communal embrace of uh, a, a different lifestyle and um, and a statement to the rest of the national community and the world that said, you know, people who are homosexual, uh, whether they be um, two women or two men, should be able to kiss and hug in the streets without that actually being a statement in and of itself, but just a statement of love. Um, and I think that this book, uh, these images together, and the vagaries behind whether or not this these two men are gay or these other two men are not gay, that question becomes irrelevant and it's more about the bonds and about just the love that's actually there and gay or straight is hopefully becomes less of an issue. Have you found that people have misconstrued this book to think it's only about gay men and then you have to set them straight or do people get it right away that it's just about a bond of brotherhood between men no matter what they're well, I think that, uh, as with all photographs, uh, they tell a story to each person, and each person comes to a photograph with their own uh, thoughts on life, their own beliefs and opinions, and any photograph will be altered uh, according to the person's own mindset. And uh, so in this case, with these images, if someone is looking at it um, as a person who either uh, is totally against uh, what being gay is, or someone who loves what being gay is, uh, that might come up more often. But uh, because there is that kind of vagary between whether or not, you know, for instance, there's Leonard Bernstein and his son, or there's uh, uh, workers in the street, and then there's also two men together with their holding their wedding bands out proudly. So for people to look at it, one of these images is, okay, well, this is gay. Uh, and then one of these other images is clearly a little bit more of a confusion there. Um, I don't think there would be as much of that uh, outright uh, thought that okay, this is uh, this is definitely gay. I, I just don't see. But if they do, so be it. And right. if they like it, wonderful. And if they don't, well, don't look at the book. <laughs> <laughs> now, John, did you can you give us a little background on how you became a photographer? Because you've had a, a life. I've had a, I'm very old, as you can see, but <laughs> still handsome. incredibly handsome, right? <laughs> exactly. And so charming. And so charming. You should have seen and us on the car ride over. Love All him. I did was, was yeah. kept touching him. Oh, yes, yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> He's making excuses. Uh, <laughs> and he wears wild socks, yes. if you haven't noticed. <laughs> yes. But it's not just beefcake, so tell us a little bit about what's going on in, in your head. Well, hands. I want to tell you, it's, it's been a life of pure, I don't know, it's, you know, all lives are are just fraught with happenstances, with events, with confusion, with happiness, with unhappiness, with terror and anxiety, and with tremendous joy. 
and I've had my share of all of that, mainly because I'm such a curious person. I mean, I want, I have always wanted to know, ever since I was a child, actually, you know, what anything meant and what uh, and why I developed certain feelings or why people behaved in a certain way or, or women, I mean, who are women mm -hmm. just as who are men? And, uh, and so my, my life has been a, a kind of quest for knowledge, not that, you know, I'm a big intellectual, I certainly am not, but I wanted to experience what life was about. And so um, uh, I, I decided that what I'm going to do is do everything. <laughs> <laughs> My kind of person. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, and also, for example, um, I went to college in, uh, at a place that I happened to have been born in Paris or in a little town north of Paris, a little gambling town called Anguien les bains which is beautiful gambling town with a casino and a lake, beautiful. Mm. And, uh, the, and the reason I was there is a whole other story, but, but we, the family lived in Paris. So I was essentially, I am a European boy, and I did not come to this country till I was 13 years old, not being able to speak English. I was a refugee from fascist Italy, because wow. that's where we ended up in Italy and with, under Mussolini. Wowza. So mm. you know how long ago that was. So you can imagine. At any rate, coming to America was absolutely thrilling, to say the least, and daunting because I couldn't speak the language, I didn't know the people, and it was all fraught with anxiety and a lot of unhappiness, too. You can imagine a 13-year-old boy at the worst stage of his yeah. adolescence. And then yeah. coming to be 14, looking awful and, you know, mm. pimples and things. I mean, it was unbearable. Mm. And I had um, uh, old parents, old parents. I did. Mm -hmm. They were old. And they I had was, you late in life. I, they had yeah. me very late. And I was very uh, young still to have such old parents. And it, I, didn't, I didn't understand. However, that's how it was. Then I decided I had to get married because that's, that's what young men do. Mm -hmm. And I was 19 years old, and I didn't know anything. Uh, who prepares us for right. life? What kind of decision do you make at 19 that you're going to continue mm -hmm. through the end of your life? That's a, that's a tough... Uh, yeah. It was a very tough call, and it actually my, my actual wedding was not a happy event, I'll tell you mm -hmm. that. Even though I was madly in love with my wife, Jane Wilson, who uh, eventually became a really fabulous painter, mm -hmm. and, a, and, a, and she was ravishingly beautiful yes. as a young woman. And, mm -hmm. she and was, you documented that very I well. Did, yeah. I did, I did. I photographed her so much. Yeah. And she's such a marvelous creature. And mm -hmm. the reason our marriage kind of uh, is lasting, because uh, believe it or not, we're married 65 years. Oh. Yes, it's sick, isn't it? Wow. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, <laughs> Yes, but the fact is we left each other alone. Jane was the kind of person who understood my kind of person. First of all, she, she's a bit older than I am. And secondly, she understood that a 19-year-old doesn't know his from his. Mm -hmm. And it was just obvious that I didn't know much. I also had no future and I had no money. So that she even... But she fell in that, love with the even, soul. Yes, she just thought uh. I was... An unusual fellow. And where were you living at the time? The in children? Iowa City. I, I met her. So, and, yes. uh, we, she was my teacher. Would you believe it? <laughs> she was my what teacher. What was she teaching? Uh, art, art history. <laughs> art history. <laughs> yes, art history. And I was her pupil. And we, I fell in love with her. And she, you know, took wow. care of my, of this love that I showed. <laughs> and, and I said, I have to marry her. But then you see what happens when you marry that young. Mm -hmm. You just don't know where it's going to lead and what it means. All you know is that you're, the emotions are there and you mm -hmm. want to hold your wife. You want to make love to her all the time. And it's so wonderful. You don't have to worry about you know, mm -hmm. holding her and kissing her and all of those wonderful things that 
you know, you're a little cautious about when you're wooing. Mm -hmm. but a true romantic. I know, yes, I love it. Very romantic. <laughs> I know, it was so nice. <laughs> and, and, and she was a girl born on a farm, mind you. Oh, yeah. And, you know, true blue Middle Westerner. And I considered that quite exotic because to be an American to me was just so glamorous. Oh, yeah. And also she had this look. I mean, she looked so gorgeous. So and she's a she's a, a famer of uh, she's a pardon me she's a painter of some acclaim Jane Wilson yes, yes. and now you have you're on what number of career is this three oh Four? three How career many? well I started out being a composer which was very short lived but mainly I'm a writer and a journalist and uh, and then very early on in the fifties I fell in love with photography photography I think you know is I can't speak highly enough of the art because, after all, we are surrounded by photographs. It's the most banal, everyday situation that we are not even aware of. I mean, everywhere we look, we open a paper, we open a, a magazine, we go on the street, we go on the bus. You know, everything, photography, everything, including things like pornography, photographs. It's photographs. Mm -hmm. It's photographs. When I was growing up, photographs were not taken very seriously, I'll tell you that much. But one of my, the jobs I had when I was in my 20s was to work for a photo agency, the, a French one, as it turned out, Raffo Guillaumet. And they had absolutely wonderful photographers whom the director of this agency wanted to introduce to America. And they were introduced to Life magazine, people like Brassai, Duano, Sabine Weiss, you know, who became, you know, Man Ray, people who became incredibly famous mm -hmm. as the years drew on. But, uh, we, but, but we got them very early on in the 50s. Their pictures sold for Life magazine for like $10 each. And, you know, these were masterpieces of them. <laughs> So I was handling masterpieces at a very early age. Were you living in New York City by I then? I was, yes. And I brought my, yeah. my wife and I, I got my two degrees, BA and MA, as did Jane. And I took my- Out there in the Midwest? In the Midwest mm -hmm. at the University of Iowa. Yeah. And, Jane and, and then I took my bride to New York because we wanted to be sophisticated young people did of the world. Did you go to the Lower East Side? No, the, no. the village. The West Village? The West Village. What street? The 12th Street. Oh. And I Hudson. lived on 13th for 25 years. There you go. Years. Well, there you are. We're neighbors? Well, of course. I was down on Thompson, so. And oh, okay. <laughs> Sam, you live in the city now. Well, yeah, I'm you in know. Brooklyn now. Yeah. Oh, in yeah. Brooklyn, we're all. Which is the, the new West Village. That's the new West Village, right. yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, you know, coming, the, coming to this book, mm -hmm. I will tell you, it, it was, as, I, as you heard, Sam. Swayze, who became my assistant about two years ago and whom everybody falls in love with because he's not only so smart but so handsome, right? Like that movie star, good luck. Movie star, guy. exactly. Yeah. And, <laughs> uh, but he saw that there was this potential of this book and he also gave it its title, Two Men. Very simple. Well, one of the reasons, you know, as, as we began to work together, I, I looked at these pictures, and I also became aware and was able to say in my introduction that men, basically, are really put upon it as little boys. Let's face it, when a little boy gets to be like six or seven, I mean, he is suddenly, uh, suddenly he gets the inkling that he is a boy. That's for first. That's first. And the parents mainly the father says, I'm a man and you're going to become a man as well. And you know, men have certain things that men do. Like, you know, boys don't cry mm -hmm. and men are not like women and boys, you know, grow up to become breadwinners. They become soldiers. They, are, you know, are the instigators, mm -hmm. the fighters, the providers. Uh, people who, you know, have this, well, you know, uh, a, a little boy growing into the, his teens be, becomes more and more aware of what must at 
moments certainly become a real burden and you become saddled somehow with the knowledge that being a man is absolutely something different. And there's something I felt, there's something, especially in American men too, which I feel there's something rather poignant about them because they're both still little boys in a funny way because everything is so available in this country and everything is, is somewhat easier than let's say war-torn Europe, you know, we yes. know about that. They get to know a sense of pain and stuff mm -hmm. more than some American boys do. Not that their pain is any less, but, you know, they don't go through, haven't gone through unless they became soldiers. And, but being a man is very hard. So I, in looking at these pictures, the, you know, the togetherness of men is not talked about very much uh, as, the, say, the togetherness of women or even, you know, books like Little Women. and mm -hmm. Women have a relationship that is really unique to them. And as we all know, relationship between men and women is so complicated. It's almost sometimes like an anomaly because we are so different and because we have uh, different ways of growing up. Little girls grow up in a way that is really quite different. Mm -hmm. Unless you know you're a tomboy or you suddenly think you're a boy rather than a girl. But that's and, accepted. We uh, talked about this before. A, a yeah. girl can exhibit boy-like qualities. Yes. But a young boy cannot exhibit Absolutely female no. qualities. No, no. Mm -hmm. that's, you know, that's, a, that's a no-no, you see. And, and of course, the dads are right there too, you know. And so I have a picture, you know, even a beautiful picture like a boy and his father playing baseball. But mm -hmm. it's the boy thing. It's and it's the always um, men almost making fun of women if they're emotional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, instead of saying we're all emotional. Yeah. Well, but of it's course. like, look so, at her. She's her. Yeah, right. And they're kept out of office because of things like that. So men have early on learned to shut down that very human Absolutely. side, in my opinion. Absolutely. And, and when I, I think more often than not, men can uh, often be much more emotional than women can be. I mean, I know that <laughs> I can be, you know, extremely emotional. Are you going to cry right now? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm bracing myself. <laughs> I'm bracing myself. <laughs> but it's, it's true. I mean, well, I'm, when I see a man really being emotional, mm -hmm. I am, it's such a sigh of relief. Like, oh my goodness. You're, you're accepting of it. Oh, yes. yes and because uh, they've become vulnerable and are showing it. And, and they're the kind of men that I'm mostly drawn to yeah. um, because I feel I can communicate with them. I'm very bored mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. men with that wall. Yeah, uh, what's, yeah. yes, it's a, it's yes. a pity in a way. I yeah. think men are trapped in our society in many ways. Trapped. Trapped. Absolutely. I yes. couldn't agree with you more. And, uh, and so, you know, that's the purpose. The purpose yes. of this is really, mm -hmm. I mean, this is not a big societal tract by any means. Mm -hmm. These are just some you know, nice pictures, but they are pictures of two men together. And, uh, you know, two workers, I mean, there's one picture of two workers in a ditch, and the way they are together and working together is a wonderful thing to see, you know. Mm. And there is, you know, guys at Zabar's in New York, that, mm -hmm. you know, selling bread, the two of them. Mm -hmm. And that's a wonderful thing to see them, you know, just looking behind all that bread. You and have my friend, my very dear friends, Joe Pintoro and Greg oh, Terrio yes. in there here. They are. Who, yes, we, exactly. and we just talked. I just, I just saw Joe on Thursday. We were talking yeah. about this, and um, I, it, this airs before Greg's birthday. I'm sorry, but I think that he's getting a copy of this for his birthday. From yeah. Oh, it's just very yes, funny yes. That we well, were talking. That's a, it, I think yes. it's a wonderful picture of the yes, two. Yes, isn't it? Years. Yeah, and 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 then I have you know famous people like Leonard Bernstein. Yes, with his adorable son. There's a picture of him. Mm -hmm with his son at a urinal, believe it or not, in Italy because we were... It's a bonding experience yeah, we, for you really men. Is, we women yeah. don't have that. <laughs> really. That's a real no, no, man, 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 man experience. But with, yeah. with that photo, can, I know that we had spoken about this off camera, yeah. about uh, Leonard and his son, and yeah. you had mentioned how it was one of your favorites. It is. Mm -hmm. uh, but his son, what's his son's name? Christian, is that right? 
Alexander. 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 But he, he was not quite as fond of that? Is that correct? No, he got very upset. He said, John, please, <laughs> what are you doing? I mean, showing us being, oh my God. John. And I said, but look at this picture, it's so adorable. You know, he's like uh, 12 years old and and they look at each other, it's so sweet. It, it is, and uh, it's a ritual that yeah, the father teaches, absolutely. this is the way that's we right. men do this. That's right, exactly yeah. right. <laughs> Definitely. And it's absolutely. also quite a, a simple thing to do anyway, though. You know, yeah. It right. shows yeah. what a simple activity, I mean, I mean, strange if you really want to get into it, but it's so simple and uh, <laughs> everyone every does life. it. Right. I mean, everyone exactly. yeah. everyone kind of has to go through that part of life, yeah. learning it's how to pee. Part you know? of, uh, uh, so. uh, um, well, again, we could get into this very deeply, but yeah, it is sure. part of almost a, a line drawn between women's private parts and men's yes. that are more accepted. Yes. And I think that gives men a certain power in no, a symbolic certainly. way oh, out yes, in the yes. world and no a bond. Question. No question. And no. women have this. this uh, anyway, thing. it's a very deep but yeah, subject. That's we yeah. don't everything have time we're talking for about it. here isn't to negate the difficulties of being a woman. I mean, being a woman is also, oh. you know. I, I, don't know anything, I don't know anything about it's it. It's very difficult. Yeah. But, you know, what I find wonderful about this book is the jumping off points for conversation. Mm -hmm. Here we've gone in so many tangents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is really a, a fascinating subject, mainly because it is, even though women are not in this book, women are right in the background. There right. they are. Mm -hmm. You know, they, these, are scene, these are scenes and, uh, uh, of men without women which is another bond which can form and which is, did form. And, and I formed bonds with men, you know, and, and they are very different. I, I mean, I, I think that uh, there's something very, I don't quite know how to put it, but there's something quite deep. I'm sure it happens with women as well. But the bond between women, is, uh, between men, is extra special deep, I think. You know why? Because they are so reluctant to give of themselves. When it happens, it's the, when very it happens, profound, it's very isn't profound, it? Exactly. Women almost expect that on first meeting. Yeah. It's yeah, like, hi, how are yeah, you? Tell yeah, me all yeah. about yourself. I'll tell you all about myself. Yeah. Men don't expect that. No, so no, when it no, happens, no. Exactly. It's, it's such a gift. It's such a big thing. Well, exactly. you even think about women, when, when we meet, mm -hmm. we embrace. Yeah. And when, when women meet, they embrace other women. When women and men meet, they embrace, and even to, you know, there's a hug yes. and there's the kiss. Yes. You don't see a man meet another man, unless they're European mm -hmm. um, or not straight. You don't see men embrace one another and, and kiss. No. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. I thought that was interesting with the book, because you see, I was talking to you about this uh, uh, earlier when the book first mm -hmm. came out. You don't see two men in the same frame together, unless they're working or they're yeah. good friends or lovers. That's, that's true, yes. It's unusual to see that we start looking. You'll notice this now as you look around. You don't see men just hanging out. Hanging out, oh yeah. Right. But as you said in your really yeah. kind and wonderful article right. about the book. Fishing. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, you said that, you know, it's, it's very normal to say my girlfriend, but you don't say my boyfriend. Right, yeah. no, it's true. <laughs> There are boundaries there. <laughs> the and boundaries. I find with my husband, for instance, we've been married 33 years, mm -hmm. not nearly as long. Well, you will be. I then. want your secret. Well, you will be. <laughs> now leave each other alone. Okay. That's the secret. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> now you know. Um, he's a man <laughs> to you know. her husband. He's amazing. He is he's an a wonderful amazing, man. wonderful yeah. man. Yeah. I'm very fortunate. Yes. But what I find is when we go out for dinner, let's say, mm -hmm. with another man, I will immediately find out things about this man that my husband may have known for 10 years in business mm -hmm. that he hadn't a clue about. Mm -hmm. yeah, and yeah. I'll immediately yes, you will. draw that out and I'll say, why didn't you ever yeah. discuss that with him? And he said, well, no. You know. Yeah, why does it we come up? Talk, we don't talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> and then I, I hope I change that relationship a little. Mm -hmm. I hope I facilitate a little mm -hmm. something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's an interesting subject, to say the very least. Tell me a little bit about your views on photography today, now that everybody has yeah, a camera. It's, it's so different. 
It is uh, what do you incredible. see the future with photography? Well, is it know, going to have the same respect yeah, as everyone? I, I, I worry about it because the accessibility of the of the camera and of the telephone being a camera right. and of the whole internet situation and the entire new communication syndrome, which has taken over the world, I mean, it really has, mm -hmm. is to me so uh, a powerful a subject and so dangerous in many ways that you can communicate so quickly, not only by word, but by images, that uh, this is, uh, it does two things. The proliferation of photography being so great, it diminishes its value as a, as a work of art, let's say. While uh, at the same time, being one of the great communicators, that's, uh, you know, uh, but I think that because it's so available and people are so quick with it and are so and wanting to do this, and whereas before, you know, you got to pick up the camera, change the film, right. and the, the role, and focus, and this and that, which is what I still do because I still, I use, first of all, I use black and white photography. I love to use regular film. Yeah. And digital, oh, while... one of the last. Yeah, it is. I am one of the last. Mm -hmm. And while I am I'm completely aware of the miracle of digital photography, mm -hmm. uh, I've never been too drawn to it. One of the reasons being is that everything is so accessible to you, the photographer. I mean, you can immediately crop. Yeah, something. right, where you yeah. can't. Yeah. When, and uh, enhance. You know, and you can enhance. And you can do this, and you can do that, and you can fix, and you can do it upside down. I mean... Everything is right there. Yes. Can and, we? Oh, I'm so, I'm and so there's sorry. a picture. And, and then you can take 500 of them. Right. Not just 36, which is what I usually take, uh, if that many. But the fact is that uh, it really has become so excessive that I worry about where photography is going. Mm -hmm. well, speaking I mean, of, I'm sorry, I keep interrupting. Yeah. You're out of time. Oh, yes. but, but I wanted you to say come before, we, no, before we go, this is very important. <laughs> <Love to. laughs> Sam, yeah. um, please tell us, because you have a, a very large show that's coming up for oh, the God. book, yes. mm -hmm. and I'd like to make sure that viewers yes. um, get oh. to know about this so oh, they can yes, tune in please, and, and stop by. I, we are so proud, Sam mm -hmm. and I, <laughs> to have a show at, um, at the, uh, at the Sarah, Night Night Sarah, Nightingale. Sarah Nightingale Gallery. On Montauk Highway in Watermill, yes. little tiny Watermill. You mm -hmm. cannot miss it. There's only one gallery there, yes. and we hope it's on May the fourth, which is a Saturday, from six to eight. Oh. And, uh, and Sarah has Good. promised <laughs> not only the show, and there's uh, but there's going to be music, and there's going to be another show, I think, by somebody called uh, the other painter. It's oh, Euro. Euro. Last name. Last Euro. name. Uh, and uh, it's May the 4th. And music as well. And music Jembe as well. Jembe and Conga. Oh, yes. Thank you. What yes. a fun night. Fun I think way it's way Derby so. Day. Okay. I think it's going to be Derby Day, so that's a good way to mark yeah. your calendars and know. So uh, if anybody... And also I would like to say that Kanyo's bookstore uh, has copies of the In book. In Sag Harbor. In Sag Harbor. Yes. Thank you. And it would be so wonderful if some of you would pick up the book. And, and just take a look. And there it is. There it is. Thank you so, so, thank you so much thank for you. being with us. We could be here for just another three hours. Oh, You'll come back. God, it's amazing. It's I have so much more I want to talk about. Oh, well, it's, uh, it's been just wonderful.